it's okay with some of the doctors. Um, they, they seem pretty pumped for yeah. this session. I'm really, really excited. And um, I'm going to open up the floor to, to them to introduce themselves. I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. For all the students that don't know me, my name is Miles Murphy. I am the Academic and Industry Relations Manager for Aspen Dental Management. Um, I cover the, the states of PA, um, DC, and Maryland. Um, so all the dental schools that are affiliated in those states. Um, I work for the support organization Aspen Dental Management. We support the over 850 offices nationwide um, for Aspen Dental. So um, we support a huge amount of offices. Um, we're that backbone, we're that consultant um, for all of our practice owners um, when it comes to payroll, marketing, recruiting, um, real estate, operations, everything that goes into owning your own business, owning your own practice. We are that support organization that supports all of our doctors. I know that um, Dr. Lutz and Dr. Tiernan, they can absolutely um, testament to that. And you're going to hear about their story and, um, and shortly in a bit here. But um, I want to go ahead and thank the students for joining. I do want to let you guys know that we do have a question and answer box on the bottom of your screen. Um, if, you, if you take a look, it's on the bottom of your screen. You're able to ask any question that comes top of my mind live for Dr. Lutz and Dr. McTiernan. They'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, they're gonna go ahead and share their story in a little bit. Um, we're also gonna circle back to some of those questions that came in um, when you guys were able to sign up. So once you filled out the form to sign up, um, you had an opportunity to ask some of those questions and we got some awesome questions beforehand that we're gonna go ahead and circle back to those as well. So um, I, I wanna thank all the students again for joining and I'm gonna open up the floor to our Temple alums that are actually on with the call with us today. So Dr. Lutz, if you wanna go ahead and start and then we'll open up the floor to Dr. McTiernan. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, I graduated in 2018. Uh, I graduated late, I think in June. So, uh, but I started applying for jobs in May. I went to two interviews uh, with two different practice owners and uh, I landed uh, MCD in uh, Hazleton office in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, I worked there for two years and then I took over a bigger practice uh, and now I have an associate working under me. Uh, nothing but good stuff. Honestly, I love Aspen. It's, it works for me, the model anyway. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. I think uh, with the education you get at Temple, I mean, you're definitely ready to hit the ground running. You no, know? And a lot of people talk about doing AEGDs and stuff. Uh, not saying don't do it, but I think, uh, you know, you may be wasting a year of revenue. Uh, it, a, lot, I, I, a lot of my uh, fellow classmates and the students above me and after me have kind of just hit the ground running with Aspen and none of them have had any real problems. So that's pretty much it. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Lutz. Dr. McTiernan, if you want to jump in and introduce yourself here. What's going on? Uh, my name's Shane McTiernan. I graduated uh, 2020. So just recently. i um, been with Aspen since. I had actually ended up in Florida. I'm from PA. I've always been in PA. But I said, hey, let's go south. Let's get to some warm weather. So I told the Aspen what states I was looking at. Uh, I said I was looking for, you know, the best opportunity where I can get as much reps in with work. And they referred me to a doc. And of course, this is all during COVID. Um, so originally, I was supposed to be in an office in Georgia. And I actually had that all set up come January, this past January, I had it all set up, but COVID kind of messed that up. So I told them, you know, because I had to take a separate test for Georgia. They don't accept ADEX. They want a different test, CRDTS. So I said, hey, Georgia's not going to happen because they didn't even offer the test last year. So I said, I'm next best opportunity. And they hooked me up with a doctor in Florida. We had a phone interview. Things went well. It was COVID. So I really didn't travel down there. He seemed like a good guy. I took the leap of faith and Moved down here like a month after we had a phone call and been working since. And it's been great. Uh, you know, as Dr. Lutz was saying, you know, I wouldn't do necessarily a GPR or anything. So I just out of curiosity had them pull some of my numbers because I'm trying to get a license for Georgia as well. So I can work. My doctor owns a couple different offices and the numbers of the stuff that I did, you know, beat most GPRs because I actually applied to a couple of GPRs and was going to do one. And then I was like, I don't know if I want to take a you know, what is a 60% cut in pay. So I didn't end up doing it. And I went with Aspen and, you know, my first five months out, 
just a little quick numbers for you. My first five months out of school, I did over 500 extractions. I did 250 simple, about 250 surgical. Did about 70 crowns, about 13 crown of bridge, a couple of root canals. So, you know, I really, you know, it depends on your personality though. My personality was I want to do as much as I can. I want to try as much as I can while I got a doctor above me so they can bail me out. So I was doing anything that they would give me and it was a great opportunity. You know, now I'm doing about an E&D a day. Uh, I'm working out of two different offices. My one office is a lot more extractions. So extractions all day long. And the other office, I'm doing more crowns, doing about a crown a day now that we're starting to build up those numbers. So I'm doing a lot of work. You know, it, it's a great place to be. Lots of opportunity to move upwards as well. Awesome. Thank you, doctors. I see that a student raised their hand. Um, if you have a question, please, please insert it in the question and answer box so I can see that and we can get to that. Um, but I want to thank both of the doctors for introducing themselves. Um, as they mentioned, they are both Temple grads, so they're super relatable. Um, and that's why they're here today to, to share their story. Um, and I do want to, to segue their introductions to the first question, which is probably the most obvious one here, is why Aspen? Um, let's, let's start off with, with Dr. Um, McTiernan. Why Aspen? Coming out of Temple, you're, you're, you're still fairly a new grad, right? You graduated last year. Um, so what was your thought process, process in making that decision um, in choosing Aspen Dental? What was going through your mind there? Well, while you're in dental school, everybody's telling you, you know, like, you know a lot, but you don't know a lot, meaning, you know, you've done eight crowns, you've done 15 crowns, whatever the number is, depending on what year you are. So I was looking at GPRs hard, trying to decide what I wanted to do, whether it be, I was actually thinking of pros for a little bit, um, you know, ended up not doing pros after all. Uh, and then was looking at Aspen because, you know, I didn't want to take it. You only make 50,000 as a resident you know, you make triple that working for Aspen and, you know, I get a better experience instead of, you know, at residency from what I saw, it was much more, you know, I don't want to say fifth year of temple, but you still have all those checks and balances. It's not so much. You can go in, do your treatment plan and take care of the patient. When you're doing those residencies, it was, you know, you do a treatment plan, you review with somebody, you start to work, you get checked in while you're doing the work. And then eventually a year later and you finally finish the case versus with Aspen, you know, I'm doing turnover much quicker. You got your own autonomy. I can treatment plan as I want to do in the hard stuff where a treatment plan that's difficult comes up. You know, I have a doctor there working with me and I can bounce ideas off them. So I chose Aspen because I knew I'd be working with somebody yet be able to do my own work, which I liked. I liked having the ability to push and grind and try things while knowing I have somebody there with me. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. McTiernan. I see Dr. Lutz. He was smiling up there in the corner. Um, if, if any of that resonated to you, feel free to, to share your story on why, why you chose Aspen. Um, I, I know that you are, you, you are fairly a little bit more seasoned. You graduated a couple of years ago. Um, so why did you choose Aspen coming out of Temple? Sure. Uh, so let me just start by saying it feels like yesterday. So when you say that, I'm like, uh, you know, more established, more seated. I'm just like, holy crap. Yesterday I was graduating. So it goes by that quick, by the way. You know, three years from now, you'll be like, holy crap, I know what I'm doing. And this is not OK. I was a student yesterday. So uh, but uh, yeah, I, I chose Aspen, honestly, because that's the way I, fe I feel like the, the world is going. Cor corporate dentistry is, is going to take over pretty hard. Uh, I mean, they just, they don't have as much to offer. Now, let me be clear. There are pri private practices that do a really great job. Um, and as you start working, you get out in the real world, you really see kind of all the different types of dentistry, who's out here, who, what they're doing, what they're, you know, whether it, they take state insurance or uh, their private practice, uh, they're, they're mainly PPO, HMO, or a, something like that. You'll, you'll see the different types of docs out here. You'll see the different types of work uh, and you'll really get a taste for what is really going on in the world. Um, a lot of private practice guys like to talk down about Aspen. And honestly, I have way more to offer patients than they do most of the time. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Well, we, I mean, we work with preferred labs and uh, I can remake a bridge that breaks five years later with no charge from the lab. 
So there's, there's so many advantages that not only for you, you know, trying to make a profit and, you know, make sure that your business is successful, but also for the patient, because I've seen so many things where patients have gone to private practices and just been royally screwed over by a private practice doc, because that stuff comes directly out of their pocket. We're corporate backed. I, I mean, it all goes into a whatever and it comes out and I end up making a bonus or whatever at the end of the month, but it feels so much better for me to personally say to someone, holy crap, that bridge only lasted a year. We're going to redo it and we're going to do it better this time. And it's no charge to you, not a problem. Versus if it were me paying for the lab fee every single time, et cetera, you, you, you'll just see a lot of stuff that you as a, a person seeking care wouldn't want done to you coming from private practices. And it's because they just don't have the financial backbone that an Aspen or another DSO might have. Um, so, and that's just one example. There are so many, um, but that, that for the mo most, uh, most part, that's the reason I chose Aspen. That's why I went with corporate dentistry. Uh, and, you know, I just, I'm out here doing the best I can. Uh, I've not done anything that I would feel unethical about or something that, you know, I feel could have been done better for the patient. Uh, I've had all the resources available to me to do as good as or a better job than the local private practices in the area. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Lutz, um, for sharing your story there. I, I do want to, I do want to segue into location a little bit here. Um, I know that you both mentioned location in your introduction and how it was important to you. Um, and this is, this, is a, a, this is something that's important to all students, right? I speak to students every single day and location is on the top of their list. So if you guys can just both kind of give us an overview on how location was important to both of you as a D4, right? When you were making your decision, um, what did location look like for you? Were you set on one location? Were you pretty flexible throughout the country? Um, Dr. Lutz, if you wanna start, if you, if, let's start with you here. Um, how, how important was staying in PA for you? And if you can kind of just give your story there. Sure, so, uh, you know, I, I come from a bit of a troubled family. Uh, so they, uh, they don't do well without me around. So uh, I, I was making sure that I stayed around home. Uh, so, you know, I'm from like the Jim Thorpe area, uh, in, in Pennsylvania, Northeast Pennsylvania. So I started looking in like Allentown area. Uh, I met Dr. Chada, mm, you know, didn't really work out. I met Dr. Gupta. That's who I ended up working for. Uh, he's a great guy. I've had nothing but great experiences, nothing but good things to say about him. Um, and you know, that I, I live in Lehighton. Uh, I'm commuting to Wilkes-Barre every day, about 40 minutes. Uh, I'm happy with the drive. I, it's a good experience. I mean, drinking coffee on the highway, uh, listening to some music. I mean, it's a nice way to dewind and get ready for work. So everything ended up working out for me. I, I'm actually, I'm living in uh, my dad's house. He's, he's my, my mom lives down south with my grandfather taking care of him. My dad moved in with his girlfriend. So this house is just here. I pay my dad rent. Uh, I'm, all, I'm around my family. I get to be around all the events and stuff. So it, it was literally just the perfect opportunity for me. I, I fell right into, into place here. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Lutz. So Dr. McTiernan, I know that you're located a little bit more down south, right? You're, you're yeah. a little bit better, a little bit better, better weather than PA. And, um, you know, you, about, you, you you, you know what it, it means to kind of um, kind of relocate a little bit from Temple, right? Temple's in PA and now you're down South. So um, what did location mean to you when you were making your decision and um, starting with Aspen Dental? I'm actually kind of the complete opposite of Dr. Lutz. When I started my discussions with Aspen, I said, I don't care where in the country I end up, I just wanna have the best opportunity. And so then that's when they pushed me to Georgia and then I was like, sure, I actually signed a contract for that Georgia office. And I was like, set good to go. I was looking up places to live. And then COVID hit. And I was like, oh, man, I got to find something else. And then I was like, what's the next best option? And they're like, do you have any places you want to be? And I was like, ah, well, I'm already kind of feeling like I want to get to warmer weather. So what else do we have down south? And they're like, we got a dock in Florida looking for people. And I was like, OK, let's do it. And then I kind of went there. And, you know, as far as my history, you know, I'm from Scranton, PA. 
I went to Temple for undergrad and then dental school. So I've always been in PA. So moving was, I don't want to say like a big deal, but you know, for most people, it's a big deal. You know, I just kind of just packed up and I said, let's, let's try something new. So for me, it was a great experience. I got to move down South, uh, very mild weather for our winter. It was, I think I was on the beach in January. I wasn't in the water, but I was on the beach in January, December. So it's been nice, you know, today's good weather. So it was fun. You know, it was a great experience. You know, I definitely wouldn't change the fact that I moved and tried somewhere else. Yes. Uh, the holidays were a little tough this year because I didn't go home for Thanksgiving. Instead I chose just to do Christmas and I took a little extra time on my break to do Christmas, but you know, it was a good time. I enjoy it. You know, since then, you know, it's, it's been an excuse for all of my family to come down South. They've all been here pretty much already just trying to escape the cold or, you know, get to whatever regulations. There's not as many in Florida for COVID. So I've had pretty much everybody use it as an excuse to come down and visit. So it's not like I have been in absence of family. So it's been a good time. I enjoyed it. I definitely would try it again. You know, if this, if I find another opportunity or Aspen asked me to move somewhere else, yeah, I'd give it a shot. It was a good time. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys. So Dr. McTiernan, I love that you kind of mentioned COVID um, because you can relate to some of the D4s on this, on this session now, because when you were a yeah. D4, COVID was still a thing, right? It had just started a little bit. Um, and you know what it means to kind of have to adapt and, you know, maybe get, get outside of your comfort zone a little bit regarding location. Um, so I, I love that you mentioned that point because a lot of the D4s on, the, on this um, session can kind of relate. They're going through the motion now right? Like it's, they're, they're graduating in a couple months and they're still trying to figure it out whether they made their decision yet or not. Um, I know COVID has to, has to have an effect on that, right? Like everything is different now. Times have changed even from a clinical standpoint. Um, so I, I love that you kind of touched the point there with COVID had to, had to make you pivot a little bit um, when you were making your decision. So thank you for that. Um, so I, I see a, a question came in from a student and Dr. Lutz had jumped in and, and, and answered it on, in the question and answer box. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and read it. Gonna let Dr. Lutz, maybe if he wants to expand on that answer a little bit. Um, I, know, I know some of the students uh, or all of the students can't, you know, I, I'm not sure if they can see his, um, his, his answer. So question came in, do you see the same patients coming back for years or, or is it mostly people coming for certain cases? Um, Dr. Lutz had, had answered it both. I see um, problem, mad problem focuses, et cetera, but I also grow strong bonds with certain patients as years pass. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and let Dr. Lutz, if you kind of want to reiterate that a little bit and expand on that, um, you've, you've been working a little bit longer. So why don't you start, maybe you kind of have that relationship built with some of your patients. I'm sure Dr. McTiernan has as well. Um, but so since you went in and, and answered it um, first, you can go ahead and, and expand on that. And then we're going to let Dr. McTiernan um, jump in and give his, his um, answer for that. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, there's going to be patients that love you and patients that hate you. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it's the way it goes. Um, there's going to be people that you just do the best things for you change their life. And, you know, they come back every six months and they're like, Oh, how are you doing? They bring you chocolates or gift cards or, you know, whatever. Uh, and you're happy to see them. You're stoked. You're like, Oh, I'm so happy to see you. Look at my bridge. It's beautiful. Uh, and you're just so happy. Uh, and there's going to be patients who they're like, you know, they hate your guts. They come in, they're like, oh, you're so young and I hate you already. And you know, the, there's every single patient you can think of you will encounter. Uh, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> All, you, with, the, with the ones that hate you, don't let it affect your mood. The, in the beginning, they used to really get me down. I'd, I'd stay up like sleepless some nights, like, good Lord, how can I do better on this case? What can I, what can I change? And you know, the, the bottom line is there's going to be miserable people and they're going to try to bring you down. Uh, just don't let them, you know, you're, you're, you know what you're doing and it's just a difficult industry, uh, working with people's teeth, with pain, with uh, just, it can be a challenge. So, you know, just try to stay positive. You're going to have people that come in all, all the time that you love, you love seeing them. They, they make your day better. Uh, you're going to have great relationships uh, and you're also going to have bad relationships. It's just kind of part of the job. So. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Lutz. Dr. 
Victorian, and the floor is yours to answer that question regarding um, some of the patients that are coming in and um, what, what, what's, your, what's your input on that? It, it's the same. You, you're going to have both. You're going to have people that are coming in just to get that single tooth out, and you're going to have the people that are going to be lifers. I think some of that is going to depend on uh, your environment, meaning, you know, you're in a urban area where there's lots of dentists, you know, cause I'm at two different offices, that office, I get, you know, the occasional person who's just shopping for a dentist and, you know, they'll do some stuff here, some stuff there, you know, not long-term. And then you'll have other times where you have patients forever. But a lot of times you actually know that on like your treatment planning visit, they come in, they say, doc, I'm just looking to get this one tooth out. You know, you're going to get that tooth out, most likely not see them. And then you have the other times where you have a big treatment plan and the patient, you could tell, you could see it in them that they're invested. You'll see that patient once a week for the next, you know, three, three weeks, three months, whatever it may be, however big the case is. And then, you know, you'll see them every six months. You know, there, you have difference in patient, you know, how invested they are. And that's going to be nationwide. I don't know if that's going to be office to office. That's just going to be how patients view it and how much they appreciate dental. You know, it's not going to be always what you do or all that. It's going to be, do they appreciate the work done or do they just want to get out of pain and then do that again? Because we see it all the time where I'll see a patient, they need four teeth out and they're like, doc, I only want to take this tooth out because this tooth hurts today. And it's like, well, these other two are going to hurt tomorrow. And they say, I don't care. And then you see them and do you see them tomorrow when that tooth hurts? So that kind of patient just isn't invested in dentistry, but we always take care of them. I'm not saying you treat them any different. It's just, you know, that patient's not going to be a lifetime, but you do see a lot of patients that come lifetime. You know, you build in bonds with them. It's, it's very popular how patients are afraid of the dentist. So if you build a bond with them, they don't want to have to rebuild that bond with another dentist. So as long as you build that bond, most of the times they're coming back. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I, I love that you both touched upon the building relationship aspect of it. And I think that's a key point um, that we want to drive home here is um, I, I think you I think you both can agree that our patient demographic, our patient of our dentist avoiders, right? Dentist avoiders or dentists that don't have access to care. So when they come to an Aspen Dental and when they when they come in and they get treatment from Dr. Lutz or Dr. McTiernan, um, this, is, this might be the first dentist that they've seen in maybe 10 years, right? So the wound is fresh, right? The wound is open um, for them to get um, some comprehensive treatment from, from, from a doctor. And they build that relationship, Dr. Lutz or Dr. McTiernan, and they come in and once they, once they run the process and once they, they, they treat the patient, um, whether it's comprehensive treatment or they come in, for one thing, and you know, Dr. Lutz and Dr. McTiernan, they say that they need a whole, you know, they, they need other other care. Um, it builds that trust, right? They know that 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 they're in the best interest of the doctor. So I I, I love that you guys both mentioned that that um, that relationship building that you guys had both mentioned. Um, so we have a question that came in regarding the location. I it, it's it's part of like the your process when when you're looking for a job and when you're, when, when, when you're first trying to figure it out as a D4, like what process did you go through? I'll go ahead and, and read it and, and reiterate it a little bit. And you guys can kind of give your input on how the process actually worked for both of you guys. You want to kind of go into logistics a little bit. So the question is, do you have the opportunity to apply to a location of your choice? Or do you let Aspen know what state area you want to work in and they find a place for you? I could go ahead and jump in and give my insight a little bit. And if you guys want to kind of chime in a little bit on how the process went for you. So um, it really, really all depends on availability, right? Not every location is going to be available. Like I said in the beginning of the, the session, we have over 850 offices at this point. Um, so when you are a D4, whether it's early in the year or when it's a little bit later on, it really, really all depends on availability. It, it all depends on the best fit. So you might be um, interested in a location or a particular state that might not be available, right? So it's all on what's important to you and what's available. Um, so let's, let's let Dr. Lutz jump in a little bit. How did you, what was the exact process for you 
I know that you touched upon it a little bit earlier, but if you kind of just want to give us a little bit of logistics, did you connect with the recruiter first? Did you connect with one of the owners or both, right? So how did that look like for you, Dr. Lutz, when you were particularly a D4? Sure. So it was actually a really, really weird experience. So the recruiter was, uh, he was the worst. <laughs> he, he really was. He was a terrible person. Uh, he was trying to just screw me over, to be honest with you. Uh, it wasn't until I talked to my, my buddy, Alex, who was uh, the vice president of ASDA at the time. And then he reached out to Niv, uh, Dr. Niv, Nivitha, you guys all, anybody who's an Aspen knows Niv. Uh, and then Niv was leaving her job in Hazleton to move to Wilkes-Barre. So then because of a friend of a friend, they got me an interview with Dr. Gupta. And that's kind of how that went. Um, so I, I sidestepped the whole recruiter process because, you know, he and, and it wasn't I don't, I don't even want to blame the recruiter because it was the practice owner. Um, but if you look down here at, at some of these questions I answered, you'll see that um, Aspen is even though it's corporate owned, the practice owners have a huge say in the way that things go. So just because you have a bad experience with one practice owner does not mean that you'll have that same experience with another practice owner. So, you know, when I was going through the, the contracts and stuff with the original person that I interviewed with, um, you know, he was trying to dog me and I figured that out. I went to another practice owner and he's been really good to me. So you just have to be, don't be stupid ask your friends, you know, what they're getting offered and, you know, what is in their contracts if they're doing similar things and compare and contrast, you know, don't be so quick to sign the papers, make sure that you do your due diligence and, and you, you figure out what's best for you. That's pretty much it. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Lutz. Um, if Dr. McTiernan, if you want to jump in and give your story, when you were a D4 at Temple, um, how did it work for you when you were um, looking for a job and how did you end up landing it? I did much more traditional. I was working with the recruiter the whole time. Um, she was awesome though. Uh, it was Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> she was not a problem. She was like, really, you can tell she was on my side. She was working with me. You know, she really, you know, was helping me out on, you know, where I wanted to be and what was important to me. You know, of course she, she's got to fill certain positions. So she was offering certain positions or certain locations. So she at the beginning, I said, you know, I'm willing to go anywhere. She said, how about Georgia? Um, and then I think she got me in touch with the Georgia recruiter because there's a different recruiter for a little bit down south. I talked with them. They gave me a couple different cities or a couple different options. They said, you know, look into these. So I did a little bit of research. I looked into the city, looked into what was there. You know, I asked how well the office did, what kind of work I would do at those offices. And then from there, I kind of said, I think this office is, you know, the office I'd be most interested in. And then from there, they set me up with an interview. They, this is back when you could do all this stuff. They flew me down to Georgia, uh, got me a hotel, rented me a car. I stayed there for like two, three days, uh, met with the owner, stayed there like for a day, shadowed, uh, drove around the city, checked it out. Um, I said, yeah, I could do this, uh, sign the papers. And then obviously COVID changed that. And then uh, for the second time around, I was just talking with the same recruiter and I was like, she's like, you can try and wait out the test, see if that George is going to come through. Because this was in the time of like, we were kind of like on a two week thing. Every, every two weeks, they were like, okay, we're going to wait two weeks for COVID, see what happens. And then it became like June. And I was like, listen, I can't wait anymore. I'm not just going to keep waiting around for this test. I said, what else do you have? She said, we got a doc in Florida. I talked to him on the phone. He seemed like a good guy. And at that point I was like, I just want to work. So I was just like, all right, let's do it. And he's like, he seemed like a good guy. You know, I asked the questions that were important to me, you know, like kind of work, you know, I kind of felt him out in our conversation on what his mentality was and what he expected of me. And, you know, he kind of, the owner is going to be the big factor or the doctor that you're overseeing or the doctor that's overseeing you. Cause you're kind of want to see, how much are they going to hold your hand? If, is that something you're going to want? Are you going to want somebody to hold your hand? Are you going to want somebody that's going to say, like my doctor, he was, he let me do everything I wanted. And he'd look at the stuff I did, you know, look at x-rays and, you know, if he saw that I was trying to bite stuff off more than I could handle, he actually let me do it. And then once I failed, he was like, okay, you shouldn't do that next time. But it was never like a bad thing. It was like a tough extraction. He'd be like, yeah, you shouldn't have done that extraction. 
Ooh. It'll be like an hour later, I'm sweating. I finally got it out. And he's like, yeah, you're not going to do that again, are you? I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to refer that one. So it was a good experience to like do that kind of stuff. But I knew that was the kind of guy that like I could get along with. Somebody that would kind of let me do stuff and experience stuff. And they get, he was just a good guy. So it's been a good experience. But yeah, when I, I talked to him on the phone, that's actually all I did for that one. There was no flights or anything because, you know, it was just late in the game. So I kind of was like, where's a good place to live in the city? He told me a general area. I got an apartment in the area and it was, it worked out. You know, it was a really nice area. He's been here for a long time. Don't get me wrong. This is like, I don't want to say risks, but taking a lot of leaps of faith, but it worked out. You know, if you have a good connection with your boss, if you can understand that and kind of feel that out on people, you know, there's, I've talked to other doctors where you could tell they had a little bit more money focused or, you know, they kind of were a little bit, you know, uppity, I guess you can say they, you know, they knew they were an owner. They kind of had that air about them. And I've talked to doctors like that and, you know, that, that wasn't what I was getting off of this guy. So kind of just went with it. He said, he seemed like a good guy, a good mix. He seemed like I could work well with him, but yeah, the first doctor was awesome too. Like it was a, a female. She actually is in the Columbus, Georgia office. She's the number one provider for Invisalign for the country. So, like, I was kind of bummed that I didn't get to do that position because she, her office kills it. Nice. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, in the end, I actually, from shadowing, I told my doctor, I was like, yeah, this lady's got uh, an assistant who only, she only does Invisalign, like, consults. And, you know, we're trying to work that into our offices. So, it's cool. Me and the doc, you know, bounce ideas off each other. And that's kind of what you want to find. You want to find a doctor that's willing to work with you, not just have you there to work, you know, willing to help you grow. And that's what this guy wanted. You know, he said, you know, in the future, I definitely have the opportunity to be an MCD, which is good because that's what I was looking for. I was looking for a little more responsibility. And, you know, he also did say, if you're looking in the future, you know, partnership was a possibility, you know, that was important to me. So that factored into me going there. So one of the things that was one of the big things I was looking for with you know, getting a job. And even that first one was ability to move up. I just didn't want to be an associate forever. And both jobs offered me MCD in the future. It wasn't like they were saying you can get it today, but they were saying, you know, you work hard, you know, we have a good relationship and we'll give you that next step. Cause there are offices that already have MCDs and, you know, they just don't have that expansion. There's nothing wrong with being an associate. It just wasn't what I wanted to do forever. I wanted to be an associate to learn as much as I could. And then when I felt ready, take that next step. And I looked for a job that had the availability to take that next step. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I, I love that you both mentioned, um, you know, like you both had different stories, right? And, and, and that's awesome because there's, there's absolutely many ways to go about it, right? You can connect with a friend that works for Aspen Dental. Through, you can, you know, get a referral. Um, you can connect with a recruiter. You can connect with an owner. You can go ahead and shadow um, there's so many ways to kind of get in, um, especially when you're a D4 and really don't know how to, right? Um, so we, we absolutely provide the opportunity to kind of get your feet wet a little bit, to you, utilize your resources, utilize, you know, maybe a friend that might work, work with us or um, speaking with a recruiter, doing it the conventional way, um, like, like Dr. McTiernan did it. And, and I, I love that you, you mentioned Dr. McTiernan. I love that you mentioned what was important to you when you were joining. Um, and you mentioned a little bit about mentorship. And I want to, I want to um, segue to that, to that question, because we did get a question. Um, there's, there's a question about mentorship that a student had submitted um, when, when they, when they signed up regarding what did mentorship look like at Aspen Dental and how important was it for you to ensure that you received that mentorship when you were at Temple, um, before you graduated and let's, let's see if you guys can answer both questions here. How important was mentorship to you and what did, what does mentorship look like here at Aspen Dental? Um, Dr. McTiernan, if you want to go ahead and jump in first and then we can get Dr. Lutz's insight, that'll be awesome. Yeah, so mentorship is going to vary depending on your doctor. Like my doctor was a little bit more, I don't want to say anal, but he, he liked his stuff done a certain way. And it wasn't that it was bad stuff. It was just like, this is what's going to help you do your dentures the most efficiently. So he actually had full salary for the first month and I just walked around with him and he, I just watched him do everything. So for that first month, 
I said, I got paid Dr. Wage and I just watched him do stuff. Uh, he showed me, you know, his tricks for dentures and stuff like that. Cause you know, it's the, totally different from what you learn in dental school, but not totally. It's still the same core concepts, but Aspen has a lab in office so you can get away with doing things quicker, more efficiently because you have a lab. So he showed me that kind of stuff. He, I, I asked as many questions as I can. I watched how he treatment planned. I we discussed how I thought stuff should be done treatment planning. So I learned that way. And then, you know, after that, I kind of just hit the ground running. And then from there, I always, you know, just wasn't afraid to ask questions. I'd, even if I, like, I knew the answer, like I'd ask the doctor, Hey, like an extraction like this, how would you go about it? Or a case like this, how would you phase it? What would you want to do first? Even though I, you know, generally I had a good idea of what to do. It was nice to have that second opinion to say, you know, like, yeah, you should do that. Or, you know, maybe instead of doing this first, you'd want to get this out of the way or, you know, do these extractions at a time and then do those later if, you know, patient doesn't want to do them all now. So I kind of just kept my mind open and realistically just ask as many questions as you can. I ask questions all day long, even still, like even if it's stuff that, you know, I did a couple of days ago or, you know, take a look at an x-ray and say, hey, is this, you know, look restorable to you? Or is this something that you'd want to do? Is this extraction something you'd even want to do? Because, you know, there's times where I know there's an extraction. Most of the time it's wisdom teeth where I'm like, that's going to be tough. And I'll ask the other doc if he's, if it's something he'd want to do. And if he says he wouldn't want to do it, then I'll be like, I'll refer it. If it's something that he says he'll do, I'll put it on the schedule. And if I get it, great, I'll give it a shot. If not, they'll take it. So realistically, what it's going to come down to is with anything, it's not going to be Aspen. It's going to be any job. It's going to be what you put into it. Are you going to be asking questions? Are you going to be trying to learn consistently? Or are you going to just go in and do fillings and kind of just be basic about it? I wanted to learn as much as I could. So I ask questions all the time. I still ask questions and everybody's learning. So it's not a bad thing. Like I felt confident doing things. So I do procedures and I ask questions, but I know there's other doctors because we had a Another doctor graduated same year as me. She covered our office during the holidays and she came in and she said, I don't feel comfortable doing anything other than fillings and new patients. So that's all she did. You know, does that work out great for Aspen or the doctor? No, but she works with her doctor and her doctor works much slower with her and that's what's comfortable for her. So that's fine. You know, that that's how she was going to go about it. So she does, she's going to learn at her pace. I just wanted to be a little faster. So it's really going to be what you put into it, but there's as much mentorship as you want, you know, and if my doctor didn't have the answers, you know, Aspen has people to have answers. You know, there's an implant guy now. I don't know his name. I forget his name, but he's Sundeep. my doctor. Sundeep, there you go. My doctor's just getting into implants in his first couple of cases. He'll just text this guy. He'll send him like a picture with his phone and be like, what should I do in this case? Or how does this placement look? He'll send them the shoe great, file. Man. He gets back to you in five minutes. Yeah. So he'll text you. <laughs> there's people for ortho, you know, there's, there's just resources besides your doctor that you're not going to have other places. That's nice. And they know stuff, you know, as much as my doctor who's doing 10 years, you know, there's stuff he doesn't know, like implant stuff. And that's why they have some deep. So there's always ways to get the answers you're looking for. If you're willing to look for them. If you're just going to refer, then I mean, you're not learning anything. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. McTiernan. Um, Dr. Lutz, what, what did mentorship look like for you? And how did you receive it at Aspen Dental? What was, what was, what's your story regarding mentorship? Um, honestly, uh, Temple trains you well, guys. Uh, I'm not kidding. Uh, I, I trained under another doc for two weeks and I took over an office. I was and I know that that sounds crazy. And I literally said to the practice owner, I don't think that I can do this. <laughs> and he's like, you're going to do fine. You're going to do great. I was like, I don't agree with you. And he was like, no, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. You know, just, you know, take your time, do, do things right. And everything will work out. Um, and it did. So he was right. Uh, Asp or Temple gives you the basics, man. Um, with a little bit of critical thinking and a little bit of confidence, you're ready to go. Uh, and I, I, I've trained with other doctors. I've met other doctors from other schools. And I'm telling you right now, Temple is so good. They do such a great job. It, if you compare yourselves to doctors from other universities, you're going to see it when you guys get out. You're, I don't, 
I didn't have the self-esteem when I was getting out and it makes sense. I mean, you've, you've done nothing you feel. And the, you know, the faculty make you feel like crap about everything. You go in with your treatment plan and they're like, Oh no, that's not how we're doing these things today. And <laughs> every single faculty you work with is the same patient every single day, they're changing your treatment plan on you in school. You don't even know what's going on. You're just filling out paperwork, trying to get things done, trying to fulfill your requirements. You know, it's, it's nothing like that when you get out. Uh, so, you know, I, I would just try to have more confidence, have more self-esteem and realize you have all the tools in your toolkit to do the job. You just, you know, need to have the self-esteem and the confidence, which obviously is going to come with experience and time. So, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I'd second that. I mean, seeing what some of these other docs do coming out of temple, you know, I'd say I'm, do better work than a doc, some of the docs that my owner has under him that have been out for a year and they're from other schools. You know, they've, they just not, the knowledge isn't there. And it's not just hand skills. It's just general knowledge. Now. Yeah. I was with Dr. Being really nice. We're being yeah. really nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You guys have a hell of an education. You just be yeah. competent. <laughs> yeah. So I was there with Dr. Leong. I know he's not there anymore, but you guys still use his slides. And just like an example, like I was there, you know, for my first week, I was doing my shadowing, doing all that good stuff. And the doctor showed me, you know, a lower denture. And he's like, there's these two prominences on the back of the mandible that are always there, no matter how much resorption they have. And I'm like, yeah, man, those are genial tubercles. And like three weeks later, the doc is like, yeah, I kind of thought you were a know-it-all that day because you just knew that. And I was like, oh, no, I didn't want to act like I didn't know anything when I'm shadowing, but you know, this, the knowledge, the information, you know, is like going to be really beneficial. Like my doc, even right now, because he's starting implants, you know, he'll bounce ideas off of me. And it's just because I'm so fresh. Don't get me wrong. If I, 10 years down, some stuff you don't need to know, but he'll bounce ideas off me with like implants being like, you know, how far does this need to be away and stuff like that. And it's just going to be because you're fresh. You just, I just learned it like six months ago. Your so I still college course covered it and you know what's yeah. going on even though you don't know the armamentarium and you don't know how to place the implants, you know the what should be done and how it should be done. And these guys have been out for 10 plus years. They don't remember dental school at all. They're just learning how to place implants and they're banging knowledge off you that you have. So, you know, a lot of you just getting out is gonna be just again, your confidence and, you know, actually doing it and you have all the knowledge. You're gonna be so good, <laughs> really though. Awesome. Thank you, guys. So we have a question regarding um, your schedule, right? I, I, they, they, they had mentioned, what does your schedule look like um, during the week? Is it, you know, one day, four to five days a week? Um, what, what does your schedule look like? I, I do want to expand on that a little bit. And let's kind of dig a little bit deeper here. Um, what does the schedule look like for an associate dentist? What does the schedule look like for an MCD dentist? If you guys can, if you guys want to kind of expand on um, what a one column schedule looks like, what a three column schedule looks like, and what is an MCD's role in an office, right? Like you're, you're I, I want, I want um, Dr. Lutz to go ahead and start here. Um, what, what is an MCD's role at an office? What does your schedule like? Um, and then we'll let Dr. Dr. Um, McTiernan go ahead and jump and, and give his insight on it. Wait, wait, can you repeat the question one more time? The question is, what does your schedule um, look like, right? Like, is it, is it, how many days a week is it? How many hours is it? Um, what is the schedule like for, for an associate dentist, for an MCD, which for the students on the call that don't know what an MCD is, an MCD is a lead dentist. Um, so we can imagine that an MCD works a little bit, a little bit of a heavier workload than an associate dentist coming right out of school. Um, so Dr. Lutz, if you wanna go ahead and, and kind of give um, the sure. insight on what an associate schedule looks like and what an MCD's um, schedule looks like, and then we'll let Dr. McTiernan jump in. Sure, uh, so I, just before, I, I don't know how to answer answered questions, uh, but I was in cluster 2A under Dr. Sklar and Dr. Siegel was my prosthodontist. Um, and Dr. Kilostri was my, my periodontist. Uh, okay, so uh, my, my work schedule is freaking hectic. <laughs> uh, it's all over the place. It's as much as I can do all the time, always. Uh, normally it's four procedures in the morning, four in the afternoon. 
but depending on the procedure, maybe I'll do less. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to be prepping like a six unit bridge or, you know, something crazy with a lot of abutments, you know, I'll probably want more time. Uh, and I dictate my schedule. So, you know, if I come in in the morning and I didn't check the schedule the day before, I'm looking at through the schedule and, you know, I have 10 new patients, I have four procedures, I have uh, two periodic exams with the hygienist, I have double booked overflow, triple booked in some spots. And I'm saying to myself, oh crap, that's a problem patient. And I know they're gonna hold me up for a half an hour. Every time they come in, they tell me these crazy stories and I can't get out of the room. You know, I can easily go up to the front and be like, you cannot have this here. They need to go. You cancel them immediately. Right now you give them a call. So, uh, and the more you do it, the better you get at manipulating the schedule knowing what your capabilities are, how long things take you with which assistance. Uh, it gets very convoluted as to how good you are in what situations, depending on the patient, the assistant, your associate, your, your, even your front staff. I mean, and it's all just kind of a big game that you constantly get better at. And it, the more efficient you become at manipulating all of the variables, the, the more money you make the business, uh, but also the better experience for the patient. Um, and as, as, as with the associate, um, we never expect as much out of the associate, obviously. Um, a, a big part of my job as MCD is mentoring the, the next generation and getting them to be more comfortable doing things to make more money, but also to you know, provide more services so that I can be somewhere else. Um, so right now I'm mentoring a doc and, you know, she's, she's been working for about six months. Uh, you know, she's a little slow. Uh, obviously I, I do things quicker, more efficient. And, you know, usually the patients, you know, they want to be more with me, but in the same respect, you know, you got to manage that and make sure that you're, I'm, I'm never mean to the associate. Let me just start there. Okay. So if you guys are worried, you're going to get out and you know, the MCD is going to just throttle you every time that you do something. It's, it's never like that. I'm always just like this situation. Uh, I've been there. Uh, if you would have done this just slightly differently, it would have worked so much better for you. And the associate is very receptive. Um, she's, she asked tons of questions, doc, just like Dr. McTierson. And, you know, that's all you have to do. You, we're not looking to be, you know, skull crackers. Hey, we're not trying. It's not all about the money. We want you to be successful because the more successful you are, the more successful we are. Right. Um, but we also want you to be comfortable, but we also want you to be, to have initiative and we want you to, to push yourself to grow. We don't, just like he was saying with the, 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 the doc that he graduated with the, that was a little stagnant. It's like, I'm just doing fill-ins. I'm just doing new patient exams. Like that's not a way to be. You got to try to do things. Even if you feel like you're going to fail, there's always somebody to catch you and to help you. Uh, you're never, you're never going to grow if, if you don't try and push outside your comfort zones. That, that's all. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Lutz. Um, Dr. McTiernan, is it, is, is it a little less hectic over there down in Georgia or um, what, does, what does your schedule and what does your everyday look like? So how I describe it is it's kind of what, not to say what you make it, but you can kind of set your rules. So when I talk to the front, I say, you know, I need this amount of time for two fillings. If it's three fillings, I need this amount of time. If it's four fillings, I want this amount of time for crowns. I need this amount of time. And then extractions, you pretty, they pretty much always give you about the same amount of time. It's generally about, you know, an hour for an extraction. If you got a lot of extractions, it's two hours, you know, and that's generally your ENDs. And that's always going to be the case for ENDs because generally the more teeth, it does add time, but not as much time as you think, you know, like I'll have a single extraction and they'll give me an hour and I'll be done in like 10 minutes. So there's times when it's quick and there's also times when it's slow. So Going on that, like I said, I say an hour for two fillings and then pretty much three to six fillings because they'll sometimes do a bunch of facials is about an hour and a half. So I'll say do that for crowns. I say I like an hour and a half. And a lot of that time is actually not time you're with the patient to say it in not a bad way. So I'll come in, I'll have a production, let's say seven. That's what time I start. I'll have a production patient at seven. I'll say we're doing two fillings. I'll get my patient numb. 
I'll see a new patient while that patient's getting numb. And then I'll see an overflow or high needs, which will be, you know, a denture adjustment or a post-op from the day before. And then once I do those, I'll go back and I'll do my fillings. So I might say I have an hour or an hour and a half for a crown, but you don't. And that's kind of not in a bad way, but like that'll definitely force you to get your speed up. Cause there's been times where it's like, okay, I had to do a really long denture adjustment. It was like way more work than we were expecting. Now I got 20 minutes to finish my filling because <laughs> I got another patient coming in. And in times like that, you know, I do run behind. I run behind all the time, but that's why it's great to have an MCD because he'll pick up a lot of that overflow. So there'll be times when I'm like really far behind, like, cause I didn't finish my crown on time or the crown was more difficult than I thought, or I'm just slow with crowns. And then I'll get out of the crown and my next patient will already be in the chair, but the MCD already did the new patient in the overflow. So they really help out with that. So you schedule so that you kind of push yourself, which isn't a bad thing. You're always going to be pushing yourself because there's times when I know I'll have two fillings and they're, they could be the same hardness as another two fillings. And since I know I don't have anything going on, I'll take the full hour because I, I don't have that pressure. I'm just like drilling and I'm doing my stuff. I'm taking my time. I'm talking to the assistant versus if I don't have that kind of time, I still do the fillings and it's just the same quality. It's just, you have that little bit of pressure and that little bit of pressure is nice. Like there's been times when like, I've taken, like, like I said, an hour for the two fillings. And then there's other times when like I had the 15 minutes and I got the fillings done and I was like, wow, that was really good. Like that, that felt good to do it that quick and know that it was still a good quality. So it's not a bad thing to have a lot of patience or to have that extra work because it'll kind of get you to push your pace because you don't want to be taken forever for fillings because patients don't want to be there that long. So you take in a long time. Yeah, it's it's OK in the beginning, and but it's your goal to kind of get faster. And that's that's what you want to do is to get faster. So pushing yourself isn't a bad thing. But like me, I never sacrifice quality. Like if I know I'm going to take more time, I just take the more time. I just say, OK the MCD is going to have to pick it up or I'm going to have to do a faster denture adjustment, or I'm going to have to do a little bit faster walk in between rooms, but I don't ever sacrifice quality. And that's just my personality. You know, there's some docs that sacrifice quality. and You don't want to be one of those doctors because I've seen those crowns and those crowns suck. Or we, you know, I know another doc that, you know, they fell behind and they were doing forefront teeth and, you know, they didn't realize they didn't have posterior teeth so they kept on grinding down occlusion because every time they bit down they're like oh man I didn't grind enough and they ended up perfing on a bunch of them because they were going too fast so then they had to do free root canals so you just don't want to sacrifice your quality just because you're behind you'll make it up patients don't mind more than not you know they're like just happy to be there you know don't get me wrong people sometimes be like hey it took a long time and then you're like I'm sorry, we're getting you in. You know, we saw 15 people this today. So and they're like, yeah, it's okay. But they get through. So overall, your schedule is, you do have control over your schedule, but there's going to be times where it's like, you know, you're already behind and somebody walked in in an emergency and you just kind of got to deal with it. So there's days that suck, but there's days where, like I said, you know, you get done with a, an extraction 45 minutes early and you're pumped. So there's, there's good and bad, but that's going to be anywhere you go. That's going to be dentistry. There's always going to be good days. There's always going to be bad days. There's going to be stressful days. You just want to learn throughout the whole process. That was my goal. Just keep learning and eventually you'll get faster and you'll be able to handle those situations a little easier. Awesome. Thank you guys. Um, I want to jump into a question here that I think it's really important. And I think um, this is a question that all the students have on their mind and a question that I get asked every day. Um, we had a student that submitted it beforehand when they, when they signed up. So let's jump into that question. It's regarding compensation. Um, this is an interesting question. I know, I know Aspen does things a little bit differently. Um, so let's jump into compensation. How does compensation work at Aspen Dental? And I want to expand on that question a little bit. And how did that led you to make your decision like was was that the deciding factor or um how important was compensation to you and um what did you think of the compensation at aspen dental were you completely sold or um maybe compare it to maybe another compensation but without jumping into any numbers um just touching the surface we'll start with dr um let's hear what is compensation how does that look like at aspen dental and how did how, how did that um kind of factor in you making your decision um, 
Well, I was I was kind of sold with the the daily draw because I didn't I just did like the I'd crunch the numbers on uh I, I crunched the numbers on how much my student loan payment would be when it was still up. I, I have private loans now. So I originally was through the government where I had like seven plus percent interest and I refinanced after about a year, I built my credit. Uh, and then, you know, I, I did a, a private loan where I usually pay about $4,000 a month for my student loan for out of Temple. I, I I still have about 370, I want to say, thousand dollars of, of student loans. Um, and like I said, the payment's about four thousand dollars a month. Trying to get it done in ten years. Um, and you know, I brought my rate down from like seven percent to four, whatever percent. Uh, so four thousand dollars a month. And if you're, you're just your daily draw, you know, it should be five hundred plus dollars. Uh, you're making, you know, eleven, twelve thousand before taxes, after taxes. Uh, you know, I, obviously I, I told you guys I'm living at my dad's place. The, the rent is cheap. So, you know, it was, it was easy for me to kind of slide by on just the daily draw. Um, now I did start as an MCD. I didn't really see a good bonus for ooh, like seven or eight months. So it took me a little while to get up to speed and start clipping. Uh, and then ever, ever since I bonused pretty good, like two or three times there in the beginning, I've not not had a good bonus so you learn the ways and you know what everything is and all of a sudden you know you're you're, you're just getting the daily draw and then all of a sudden you're bonusing every single you know month thousands of dollars so i mean and obviously every single month is going to be different depending on you know how many patients you see what you do what cases you present what acceptance you get I mean, you could pitch a $60,000 implant case that gets acceptance, you know, and even if it's not just, even if it's not you, but your oral surgeon doing it, I mean, and it's in your office and you treatment planned it, you're still getting a piece, you know? So um, you, you get what I'm kind of saying. So, but also coming back from, from that, you know, an associate and MCD, their pay scales are going to be a little different. Uh, and usually it's based off of a percentage. Um, but again, kind of the daily draw was all I really needed in the beginning to, to make sure that I was covering my payments and, and, and taking care of myself. Thank you, Dr. Lutz. What about you, Dr. McTiernan? Um, how did that kind of, if you want to expand on, um, I, I think Dr. Lutz, um, he kind of went over the logistics on what the compensation structure looks like um, with the daily guaranteed and then the profit sharing plan as, as, the, as, as a percentage of um what the doctor gets, right? So Dr. Dr. McTiernan, how did that factor in in you making your decision? Um, I know that you started off as an associate. So if you kind of just want to expand on that a little bit more. Yeah, so, you know, it was a big factor for me. That's why I wanted to go to a good office to try and get that, chase that bonus. Um, in the beginning, I would say, don't rely on the bonus, rely on your daily guarantee. And that's just going to be because you're going to come in and you're not going to produce as much. So, you know, your percentage, because you know, they're paying you to be there, you're going to make more money in your draw than you will in your percentage, which is, you know, that's fine. You get your daily, daily guarantee. But I think a good thing about Aspen is, you know, you make money not off of your own skills all the time. Like you could be an okay associate, but have an amazing oral surgeon. You can have an amazing MCD you technically make money off of that because how you get paid is 9% of office collection, I believe, after um, fees so and all that. That's different. Every single practice owner, practice associate yeah. is always going to be different. So that's, that's going to vary. Yeah. You were given, uh, I think most associates are probably between five and seven. Yeah. So you get your daily guarantee and you're going to ride that for the most part. Um, you will get some, you know, I bonus a couple months when we had really good months. That's the thing, you know, you get some money based off of how well the practice does. So it's not only based on your skills, it's based on how well the practice does. So you figure hygiene or surgeon, MCD, you know, it's the whole concept that you get money based off of. So it's good of a place to be because you, you're not going to be fast. You're not going to be great. You're not going to be the best producer in the beginning, but you're going to still have enough to cover the bills. And I mean, when we say cover the bills, you're going to do pretty good. You know, six months out of school, you don't have any loan payments. So 
you're going to be collecting good money and not really have much going out the door in the beginning. And once, once the loans come due though, you know, it is tighter, but it's still, you're not like strapped for cash. You're not living paycheck to paycheck. Awesome. Thank you guys. I, I love that you both touched upon the daily guarantee, um, the profit sharing plan. It does vary by, by, by office. Dr. Lutz is completely, um, absolutely right. With it, like I said, it all really depends on location. Everything depends on location, but um, ballpark generally, that is what you're going to be seeing. Um, but thank you both for, for answering that question. I know that we're coming up on over an hour here. Um, so I do want to ask one last question. And this was, this was an awesome question that was submitted beforehand as well. Um, so the reason why you guys are here is because you guys are not only awesome doctors, right? But you're relatable. So you both are, are Temple grads and you both can relate to the students on this, on this session, right? Like you, you've been in their shoes, whether you're a D1, a D2, or D3, or D4, you both are super relatable because you've been through it, right? So I want to ask you both a, a final question, and I think this will be a great way to, to end it. Um, and let's start off with, with Dr. McTiernan here, because I love that you mentioned previously about COVID, and you knew what it meant to kind of go through the motion and um, choose your career path. And, you know, you, you kind of had to make a little bit of a, a little pivot, right? You had to kind of adjust to the times. So if you were, um, if you, if, what, what would be the biggest piece of advice you can give to every student on this call, um, regardless of class, regardless of situation? Um, I know that we are kind of in weird times here and um, whether, whether they're a D3, D4 going through the motions at clinic, whether they're D1, D2 kind of still getting started and still kind of getting their feet wet um, in dental school. Um, so both being Temple alums and knowing how the program works and going through the motion of finding, you know, finding your career path and, and going from there. So Dr. McTiernan, we're going to start off with you. What would be your biggest piece of advice to um, all the students that are on this call? Nah, just to just to go for it. Don't be afraid to give something a shot. I mean, if you're interested in a place, speak up. Say, I'm interested in this location. If you're interested in trying stuff dental wise, just speak up and give it a shot. Um, you know, you don't. You're not going to lose anything by asking questions. You know, just I'd say, just go for it. You know, as much as you can. Try as much as you can, you know, whether it be location, don't be so stuck to a plan. You know, I'm a planner. I like to have my plans, uh, you know, stuff didn't work out how I wanted it to in the beginning and just adjusted and made new. And, you know, it's been great. You know, I have no regrets of it. So say, so just give it a shot, go for it. If you really want something, go for it, learn and adapt. Awesome. Thank you, doctor. So Dr. McTiernan says, just go for it, right? Just go for it. Um, what about you, Dr. Lutz? What would be your biggest piece of advice to um, a student on this call, whether, you know, they're still earlier, early off in their, in their dental school career, or, you know, they're a little bit later off and looking for their first opportunity out of dental school and trying to, you know, I, I know it can be a very, very anxious time and just trying to figure out where you fit in, whether that's location wise, whether that's interest wise, whether that's, you know, motivation wise and what's important to you. So Dr. Lutz, what would be your biggest piece of advice to all of the students that are on this um, session as of today? Um, that's a really, really good question. <laughs> There's so many variables. Uh, I mean, yeah, confidence is important. Just knowing your self-worth. Uh, but also like financial stuff is very important. You know, if you have a lot of student debt, I mean, getting out and working again, rather than doing a GPR is, is huge. I mean, once you're out here and you're doing it and you're learning, uh, you know, a couple of years goes by, like, like I said, like the blink of an eye, literally yesterday I was in cluster 2A, like begging people to sign my stupid papers, you know, and <laughs> seriously, it goes so fast. And you know, I would hate to see you feel like you wasted time and end up with regrets, uh, you know, because uh, again, money is important, you know, your student loans, the interest you pay every day. I mean, I'm, I pay $1,200 a month in student loan interest. And that's, you know, that's at a 4.5% interest rate. So, you know, if, if you're taking another year to, to, 
you know, screw around really, uh, uh, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna regret it later, probably, especially if, if you enter a program that's not, not expanding just so what do I mean by that? Well, okay, so you do like a GPR and, you know, they teach you how to do fillings a little bit better. Great. You know, but did you learn how to place implants? Are you, are you doing molar endo? Like, how are you expanding if you're doing a GPR? And, and you really got to keep that in mind because you're at this point, you're probably just afraid to get out there and do it. And I was too. And honestly, if, if it didn't just fall in the way that it did, I probably would have tried to continue going to school because that's what we've done our whole lives is be career students and that's what's comfortable. Uh, but taking the plunge and getting out there and starting to work is what you have to do now. And you have to start paying back those debts and you have to start setting yourself up for retirement. <laughs> you gotta get your 401k and your, your, Roth, your backdoor Roth IRA and you gotta start planning for your future because just like how dental school ended really quick and you know soon you'll be 4 years out soon you're going to be retiring and you know you want to be able to do that as quick as possible because working is work <laughs> you know uh, so you know try to be objective try to think objective try to think about yourself as a whole don't don't think about you know the baby steps you're going to get there obviously baby steps are important but you know again just have some confidence and and be ready to expand you guys are all very, very, very capable of doing the job with the education that you have. You just need to feel supported and you need to try. That's it. And you guys are all going to do great, really. Awesome. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank um, Dr. Lutz, Dr. McTiernan. I want to thank all the students of Temple um, for joining. You, you guys are all rock stars. Um, you guys are awesome doctors. You guys are awesome students. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, if you guys have any questions for Dr. Lutz, if you guys have any questions for Dr. McTiernan, please, please feel, re feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll go ahead and forward them, them over um, some of your questions. I know it's a difficult time for you guys um, with exams and um, going through all the motion. And um, it, it's, really, really, it's a really anxious and difficult time for you guys as of now. So I wanna thank you all for joining tonight. Um, like I promised, I will be sending over um, a $10 a $10 Starbucks gift card to the first 75 registrants. Um, so I will be sending that over shortly as well. I will also be pulling the raffle for um, the $100 Amazon gift card and the, the Apple AirPods. So please stay tuned for that. Um, you guys know where to reach me. I also want to thank um, Naida for, for helping me set up this awesome event. Um, I couldn't have done it without you. So I want to thank you for, for, for helping me with this. Um, we, we had an awesome time um, throughout the technical difficulty. So um, if you guys have any follow-up questions, please feel to, feel to reach out. Thank you, doctors. Thank you, students. And um, everyone have an awesome night. Thanks, guys. Yep. And uh, if you guys want to reach out to me on Facebook or whatever, if you guys have uh, more questions now or in the future. I'm very happy to accept your friend requests and answer them in the future. Uh, you know, us Temple birds, we got to stick together, guys. All right. You guys also. Absolutely. Go Temple. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>